great pleasure to introduce the next talk, which is Introducing Structure, uh, with Jan Stempion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I'm super happy to be here again with you in Berlin. Um, this visit is particularly um, special, because it's the first time I got to a conference venue, I traveled to the conf conference venue on municipal transport. I just moved to Berlin, and this thing just stopped working. Ah, Wi-Fi. Uh, I just moved to Berlin two months ago. Uh, I'm slowly learning street names in the neighborhood. Maps help a lot. But before I, before I moved to uh, Berlin, I lived in Munich for a couple of years, um, where I was organizing the Closure Munich meetup. One of the questions which um, kept returning was kept returning during our meetups was well, after I've uh, learned basics of the language and started uh, playing around with some libraries, um, how do I build an entire living thing, a whole application? How do I um, connect all the pieces? And this talk is an attempt at answering this question at building an entire structure of a whole application. I think many of us can um, relate to web applications. They represent the right scale of uh, complexity. They have a lot of moving pieces. A lot of things can go um, horribly wrong. So specifically, I'd like to focus today on the structure of web applications. Um, in many in many other programming languages, we would start by um, employing some some framework, some um, fixed architecture we take straight off the shelf. And a framework is, is an excellent solution to begin with because it takes away a lot of um, accidental complexity and fo allows us to focus just on things which is essential to the problem we're we're solving. The issue is that if we start with um, with a framework which in itself is quite a complex beast, it's very difficult to then try to make it as 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 simple and easy to 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 follow, to reason about control flow in, in the system we're building, to keep it maintainable and testable in long in the long run. And one of the interesting features of of our ecosystem, of the closure ecosystem, is the fact that there are uh, very few frameworks. There are barely any frameworks we could we could use and um, use as a interesting yes now it works there are some frameworks and I'm going to relate to them later um, to link to them later in the talk um, but in general what we do in the closure ecosystem is take small focused libraries small pieces combine them together and um, avoid the complexity of of those um, large uh, large solutions, hiding all the complexity, making it difficult to reason about details, about how the whole thing works internally. And today I'm going to introduce one, one recipe, one example from the book of my favorite recipes. Um, and it, since it's just one, one potential way to structure an application, it's no sil silver bullet, it won't work in every case, but I hope that this is something you can relate to and compare to way to, to a solution you'd apply when building a uh, web application. I'm not reinventing the wheel. In fact, I claim no novelty here. Uh, just like as, as, we, as we've heard in the opening of the conference, I'm uh, taking a bridge to the world of um, our object-oriented friends and taking a lot of inspiration from, from that um, from that ecosystem. Uh, ports and adapters, hexagonal, clean. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from those architectural approaches. All of those are some form of a layered structure. 
um, in which particular responsibilities are clearly um, clearly separated into into layers uh, of the application. In the beginning, or in the uh, central layer, I will put all of my domain entities, uh, things, nouns, which represent my domain, and uh, which I will use to um, build sentences in the next layer, where I introduce use cases. My entities will play a um, role in those in those use cases and allow me to express um, various various uh, behaviors, various interactions in my domain, still completely detached from any kind of technological um, jargon detail. All of those external parts, all of those um, technical uh, parts, will come from the outside, from the world of, uh, from the outer real world. And through the layer of adapters, here you can see uh, parallel to the ports and adapters of, uh, architecture, um, I'm going to inject all the moving pieces such as HTTP databases, messaging queues from the from the outside into my uh, pure internal um, representation of the business business logic. There's one important rule: all my dependencies can point only inwards. This means that my domain entities do not know about use cases they're going to play a role in, and my Use cases, my actual sentences, um, are, are uh, devoid of words like HTTP, database, message queue, JSON, HTML. Those are things which are happening outside and are injected from the outside into my internal layers. And that's the entire theoretical introduction of the uh, to the whole um, idea. And I like to dedicate the rest of the talk to a uh, one use case, which will, I hope, illustrate how to apply those principles in practice. I will be showing a lot of code, and I'm going to go through it step by step. But if any of it is unclear, don't worry. Our goal is not to understand what every single line does, but rather, where do the responsibilities go? Where does a particular um, what is what is um, yes? What is part responsibility of every part of our um, application here? And without further ado, let's talk about booking tables. Let's create a simple service which will expose an HTTP interface, allowing us to allowing us as a client to send a post request to a resource um, to book a table in a restaurant. We will start with just three files, a um, entity, an entity, a booking, a use case of booking a table, and then an adapter, which will translate our pure internal logic into the world of HTTP, um, which we will interact with using the ring library, or the ring protocol. This corresponds closely to um, this division, this, this split into three sections you saw. Um, just a minute ago. Let's start from our domain entities. Here I'm employing um, closure spec to specify what is a valid booking from the perspective of my of my logic. Um, I say that a booking is anything which has three keys inside. Name, seats, and time. Name has to point to a string. Seats to, has to point to a to an integer, which is positive, and finally time is something satisfying the inst predicate, which is a point in time, an instant. And that's all there is. I'm not specifying any record, any, um, any concrete representation. I'm just saying this is enough to satisfy my contract. This is a valid entity in the system. I can now use it to play around and, and see, for example, that the first um, booking is not valid because the number of seats is um, not positive, and that the second booking is valid despite having one extra field, the phone number. And that's very important. That's an important part of closure respect, that providing extra information is allowed, is not a problem. This allows me to um, 
extend my objects to add more information and improve or enrich my domain with new information, keeping the old code working and not breaking all the previous contracts. That's very valuable for maintainability, evolvability of the application. One more thing I can do with this pack is to get a generator of values of my, um, of my entity. Using it, I can both get some entities to experiment with and play and uh, to, to interact with in the REPL, but also I can use it for my generative testing, allowing me to extensively um, test my entities as well as use cases, or use in any other uh, context. So this is the entity. Now we can take step a step to the next layer to our use cases. Here we want to book a table. In table use cases book table, we have this function book table, which takes two arguments. The second one, booking, you've seen a second ago, and context is a map, which I will use to inject all of the dependencies into um, into this function, all the moving pieces in the application. And then I will call safe booking, which is defined as a protocol function. This allows me to then implement safe booking with any implementation which is, which is necessary in a particular situation, particular environment. It might be a Postgres database in a production setting. It might be just an atom in test setting or something printing out to the standard printing to the standard output when I'm testing it in the REPL. I can make the decision as late as possible. The, the entire use case, use case remains um, detached or rather technologically um, independent from any technology. Finally, we can add an assertion checking that the booking is um, a valid implementation of a valid representation of a booking, I could also achieve the same goal by using uh, built-in instrumentation, which comes as part of Closure Spec. Now we can give it a spin in the REPL and say that given this booking and a context, all the things match and all the, all the pieces match together and the booking will be printed to, to the standard output. This was the use case in which our entity booking uh, played a role. Now it's time to expose this um, pure world into the uh, to the to the outside world of HTTP using Ring. Ring is a popular abstraction over um, HTTP, which allows us to express requests and responses as data structures and handlers of those requests as pure, as, as normal, not necessarily pure, as ordinary functions. In table adapters ring, we define a handler post bookings. It takes a request, it extracts a context from the request, the context you've seen just a second ago. Where does the conference come from? We'll take a look in a second. It uses queries params function to get, get a booking out of posted parameters. Implementation details of queries params are not, uh, not important. What matters is that right afterwards, I'm calling book table on my context and a booking and returning some HTTP um, confirmation of a successful, um, of successful completion of the operation. I can continue adding more handlers for different uh, interactions with this particular um, HTTP resource, for example, listing all the bookings. Now I can combine those things together using Composure, a library we uh, use often to build routing trees in our application. You can, I can combine uh, post bookings and list bookings in a single uh, handler using Composure routes, and then depending on which HTTP verb you use, you will get um, a desired desired behavior. I will add the middleware, which introduces, which injects context into my request, and combine all the things together in the handler function, where I 
where given the context, I create my routes, wrap it with the um, context middleware, and add all other middlewares providing um, other necessary the transformations such as content negotiation, such as decoding and coding parameters, and so on and so forth. Authentication, authorization. We have our first three layers in place. The problem is that so far, everything um, what we've prepared, what we've implemented so far is um, Pure functional, but completely dead. There is no, uh, there are no, there are some moving pieces which are missing, and specifically, um, there is no database against which we would execute our um, our safe booking uh, function calls. There is no HTTP server which will expose our application, uh, which will expose our ring handler to the outside world. We will achieve this goal by building a system of of uh, alive, stateful components. Let's start with the Postgres one. Here I'm employing the component library. Many of you surely know it. Component is a library we often use to, um, to, to define interactions with things which have a life cycle, which can be started and then can be stopped. Here using lifecycle, I say that the record Postgres is my representation of a connection to the database. And I can start it and stop it. When I start it, I pass a configuration coming from the outside into a connect function, and I associate the connected handle to the database to the record. I can then use this um, handle to close the connection and replace the connection with nil in order to allow the garbage collector to remove the handle which isn't valid anymore. Close and connect come from our placeho placeholders. They come from outside. They are uh, probably coming from um, a JDBC library or a connection pool. We have a connection which can be started and stopped. Now we have to focus on everything which is happening in between, in the middle that is executing actual SQL requests. And here we bring our use case, our use case of saving a booking. We extend the safe booking protocol, saying that a Postgres record is a valid implementation of the safe booking protocol, and we can save a booking by calling it with the connected Postgres instance and the booking, and the following piece of SQL will be executed for us. Details, again, um, are not relevant. I could then add more implementations of, of various other protocols to the Postgres record, allowing me to use this Postgres uh, connection in several use cases. Finally, we can have a small helper function, which allows us to, which, which allows us to easily create an instance of the Postgres record given configuration. We've got a Postgres representation, allowing us to um, fulfill the needs of our use cases. Let's move on to the HTTP server. It's the same story. The HTTP server is something which can be started and stopped. So it implements the lifecycle protocol. I can start it by passing, first of all, passing the context injected from the outside to the handler, also injected from the outside. I get a valid ring handler out of it, which I can pass to a start server function, which will spin up the actual HTTP server, start listening for um, incoming TCP connections, incoming HTTP requests. I save it for later because I need it in the stop method, in the stop function, where I stop the server and remove the handle. Again, a small helper function. Given a handler, I can start. I can create an instance of the server. Now we have those two independent pieces, a database um, connection, a representation of a database connection, and a um, and an, and and an HTTP server. Now we have to combine all those things together, um, 
wire them into a single system. And we do it in table system namespace, where we, again, require all the necessary namespaces and define the system function, which, given a configuration, will create a system map. A system map is also a component which can be started and stopped. When it's started, it will start all of its nested components in order one after another. Let's take a look at what happens when we start this system map. First of all, the configuration will be passed to Postgres and started. The Postgres, after, after the Postgres connection is established, we will get to the second line, to the um, context part, where the initialized Postgres connection will be injected into the empty map you see as the second argument of using. It will be in injected under the save booking key. This will allow us to use this Postgres connection in all use cases where save booking expects a save booking implementation in the context map. Using more keepers in this hash within this uh, map, which is the second argument of using, I could inject Postgres into more use cases. This map will be started, which for a map is, a, uh, is an identity function which doesn't change anything. And then the context will be passed into the HTTP server. The ring handler we defined in our adapter is passed to the HTTP server function to create this um, this record representing our server, context with the Postgres connection injected under the right key will be passed to it as well. And finally, we will start it exposing our ring handler to the outside world. And the whole thing will start serving requests to our clients' booking tables. We have nearly everything in place. The only missing piece might be a small addition at the bottom, where we create a small main namespace, which will be used to start the whole application from the command line. Here, given um, our system, we define a main function. We have a configuration, which here I hard-coded, but you'll probably read it from a file from environment, uh, from some other service, like Zookeeper, depending on the situation you're in, and then pass this configuration to the system function, which will give us this, this system map which discussed, which we discussed. We will start it and expose the whole system to, uh, to the outside world. And this is all there is. This separation into layers, which can communicate with each other only in one direction, where we can reason about how changes in particular layers in particular parts of the application will influence um, the whole system. It's maintainable because we know where to look for particular responsibilities in our, in our application. We know what we ha where we have to look if we need to modify something. If I know, if I gain new insight about my entities, if, if I know that they um, will have to represent a richer domain, I know I have to modify something in the entities directory. If those entities start playing roles in other or richer interactions, we have to modify our use cases, extend them, add new ones. And then probably expose those new use cases to the outside world as, new, as newly adapted use cases to the outside world. If we need to expose our business logic to yet another protocol, yet another system, yet another uh, communication channel, for example, accepting messages coming from a message queue, or, for example, Kafka. We will have to add another adapter which translates the world of Kafka into our pure um, logic inside of the system. The whole system remains testable because the core of it is completely 
uh, agnostic of any technological details. They are injected from the outside. And in the outer and the two inner circles, we can inject implementations of our use case of our protocols backed by simple atoms, which will be perfectly enough for tests. They're fast, they don't rely on a third-party service on a database. This allows us to test those um, use cases extensively, to subject them to property-based testing, and so on. Now allow me to quickly review what are the libraries I, I showed so far, and there aren't many of them. I use Clojure spec to specify those contracts between layers of my application, to specify what is a valid entity in my domain. It's a very good tool for the job because it allows me to grow my domain, to extend my domain in the future, allowing me to maintain the application in the long run. I used Ring and Composure to abstract over HTTP and build a routing tree in my application. A good alternative to Composure is Biddy. I recommend taking a look at Biddy, which is a library allowing me not only to create routing handlers, but also generate routes in my application, to generate URLs as strings in my application. Then I use Component to abstract over the notion of lifecycle, things which can be started and stopped. A library which I haven't used, but I um, recommend you take a look at is System. It's this library implementing a lot of ready components you can use in typical applications you build. You surely noticed that when I was or when I was implementing the logic for starting and stopping Postgres connection, it's surely something which I would keep doing over and over again in every application I write. And system comes with prepackaged components for exactly this responsibility for a variety of applications, for databases, messaging queues, servers, and other things you need to connect to before you start using them. There are interesting alternatives to component. I recommend, I encourage you to take a look at um, Mount, which is one library offering a different approach to managing lifecycle, and Integrant, another interesting solution to the problem. And then finally, to address the fact that I lied at the very beginning of the presentation, there are frameworks. There are frameworks like Luminous and Duct, and they are thought through approaches to um, the problem of creating web applications. I encourage you to take a look at them and compare them with, with what I showed today. See how they compare, how different decisions are, are made, or how different decisions influence the uh, way you build your, you structure your, your application. This is all I've prepared for today. With this simple separation into three layers and a single rule forbidding you from looking anywhere but inside, you can clearly separate responsibilities in your application, building a, building a project which is maintainable, which is testable, and one in which you can clearly follow the control flow. You know exactly what happens to requests, to um, data flowing through your application. It's not hidden by, by any uh, obscure abstraction. It remains at hand, and you know exactly where to look if you need to modify something. And if you don't build web applications, all you need is to replace my ring adapter, an adapter with an adapter which corresponds to your view of the world. If you're consuming data from message queues and writing them to block storage, you need a an adapter for you need adapters for those two things. Perhaps if you're building video games, you need adapters which correspond to streams of inputs of mouse and keyboard events, and the rest remains pretty much unchanged. Data in, data out. 
I encourage you to take a look, experiment, and let me know whether it um, works for you. This is all I've prepared. Thank you all very much.